Hey, we're on to um, blog topic 13A. I think there's a B and a C. We already saw 13. It's such an involved topic, and I know it blows a lot of people away, so be patient. You want to go out to the link. You want to go out to the link that I give you. It has all the details, so you're not going to believe me until you go look at all the the verses, you know, look at all, look at the links. I don't know if we need more cowbell. <laughs> that was a funny skit, Saturday Night Live. That was hilarious. So this is the Old Testament scriptures were only for the Jews. I saw this mentioned uh, by Paul and, and, and John and, and all these people. The Old Testament uh, scriptures were only for the Jews and only until Christ finished them. He finished them. You know, it's the word tel where we get telescope is the end. Boo, way over here. You know, see the stars way out here. We've already seen that the Old Testament was simply God's way of creating a peculiar people. There's a purpose for everything. And there's verses for all these, so go to go look at the references. A peculiar people for himself, holding his children by the hand, treating them as children, as pedagogists, which are household school escort guardians. It's a Greek word. That's who took them to school, made sure they were safe, got back safe, made sure they went to school, did their homework. And they were hired servants, right? Uh, household guardians and household managers. Two other Greek words. You can see the verses that use that. And this is where they learned their uh, rudimental ABC fundamentals. Another Greek word, stokia. That's talked about so much. And this is their reading, writing, and arithmetic stuff, right? Reading and writing. This is where they learned about God and his will. It's how they learned how to read and write. They, they learned from the Jewish scriptures. And they also learned from the oracle utterances of God, the prophets. So the law and the prophets. Okay? That was the prophets. The prophets. And these ABCs, right, from the law, and the Logion, oracle utterances of God, the prophets. So, but only until the coming, right? Only until it says, the coming of trusting, relying faith in God's Son, Jesus, made them adults, right? To receive their promised inheritance. That word there is matured sons. Sons, not daughters, but sons were the ones, and they had to be matured of a certain age. They could receive their promised inheritance, which was the Holy Spirit being the first fruits. All right? The Holy Spirit was considered uh, the first fruits. The first part of the inheritance. That's why the New Testament only quotes, it only quotes from prophetic Old Testament passages about the completely different in kind New Covenant and Jesus' Gospel Logos message. They use these prophetic oracles, right? These Logion, right? Oracle utterances. They used them to convert Jews, right? Simply for the Jews to come to me, as Jesus kept saying. It's always, always, come to me, come to me, come to me. To convert Jews, right? Catechize them. And that's what it was used for. But the Bible students and teachers would rather go back 
to their scripture tables. The rabbis, remember, and the scribes, they wanted to go back to their tables. And we'll talk about these tables. Even though Jesus said, but it is they that testify or bear witness from about me. It's they. Jesus didn't lie when he said, I did not come to definitively or wholly loose, tear down the law. He didn't do that. And the prophets. But to definitively, wholly fulfill to completion, that's plural, them, before heaven and earth passes away. Every detail of the law, he's, he goes into all this jot and tittle, every detail of the law, definitively wholly becomes or occurs. He says, not until it becomes or occurs. However, Jesus, knowing that all, yeah, all, now, this word all, pos normally uh, means as every of a kind or class or category or portion of in this every prophecy about his work as the Messiah. So it's a class. It's a category. All right, so what is he going to say here? He says, knowing that all was now, teleo, finished or accomplished, completed or ended, is not the entirety of Scripture. Pos usually doesn't mean the whole of it, but all of a class, every of a class. So every all, plural, or every singular of a class, category, or portion. And in this context, every prophecy um, refers to every process, every prophecy about his work as the Messiah. So that's exactly, it usually never means all or the whole of it. So Jesus saying, knowing that all was now finished or accomplished. You see, the entire Old Testament was not accomplished. There's many prophecies about the very last days of the church, last days of the earth, judgment to come, etc. So it was not all finished, but the things that were about him were finished. Um, said in order to definitively, holy, teleo, finish or accomplish, complete or end the graphe scripture... And again, in all three cases where graphe scripture is used with the definite article, right? It refers to a certain portion of scripture that is the prophetic portions regarding Christ and his work. So again, if you understand Greek and you look up things, you're going to find out he's not referring to all of scripture, but these scriptures that refer to him. And that it was going to be finished. And he said, in order for this to be finished, he said, I thirst. And soon after that, he said, it is finished. He used the same word, teleo, finished, accomplished, completed, and ended. And he died. So he did everything about the Messiah. There is no more fulfilling right, to completion, left to do. He said he was going to do this before heaven and earth. It's a, it's a, it's a way, it's, a, it's, a, it's called an idiom. It's a hyperbolic idiom, you know. It's like, hey, I'm going to get this done before heaven and earth. <laughs> right? People saying he's talking about all of Scripture. No, he's talking about himself. And he finished it because the glass was now full, right? That's what it means. Filling to completion. There's nothing left for him to do. Christ's work was finished, accomplished, completed, and ended. Period. <laughs> right? So you got to understand, if you don't understand Greek, if you don't read Biblio, uh, Bible Hub, or Classic Net Bible, and you try to build all your doctrine off of English translations, you're in big trouble. There's 900 of them. Which one are you going to choose? They all say something different. Go look on any verse uh, on Bible Gateway, and there's 55 of translations there, and just hit the bottom where it says, look up in 55 translations. And you'll see, it's not minor differences, major differences. Major differences in meaning. Because there's all kinds of bias and misunderstanding and 
There's people that work on these Bibles that are not even Christians. They are just specialists in A, B, Z. And there's a lot of error, and there's trying to save print space. Go look at Bible info. I thirst may indeed refer to the scripture, right? Because there was a scripture, the scripture, that was finished or completed or ended. That was a citation from Psalm 69, 21. It said, for my thirst, they gave me sour wine to drink. So he's saying, hey, he could be referring to this one scripture. However, it's no coincidence that teleo, in regards to scripture, if you look up the word finished, in regards to scripture, is never used elsewhere by John because he uses the word plero, fulfilled to completion instead. All right? So... What am I saying here? However, Luke twenty two thirty seven refers to Christ's death as finished or ended in me. In me, Jesus says. That which has already been written with ongoing routine results. That's, that's graphe, grapho, the verb. Regarding a citation from Isaiah 55, uh, 53, 12, it says he was counted with sinners. But both uses by Jesus indicate finality, all right? Both uses. Some Greek grammarians note that scripture in the singular with the definite article without clear citation, if you if you, you don't see a reference to something, may actually refer to the whole or entirety of scripture, right? May may refer to the whole of entirety of scripture or at least um all those in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms, different verses, concerning Jesus, right? Again, a portion or class of Scripture being plero, fulfilled to completion, or teleo, finished, completed, or ended. So that's what I really believe is being done here. Jesus kept his promise before earth and heaven passed away, which was a common hyperbole. That's why Paul could boldly say the law has been catergeo, thrown down to be inactive and useless. Christ's death so completely finished Scripture, all right, it, not the whole Scripture, but at least all the prophetic portions, those referring to his work, right, that he was going to do, that the curtain of the temple was torn into from top to bottom, signifying the end of the Old Testament separation of the common man from the presence of God in the Holy of Holies. That was behind the curtain. All right, so I believe that's what it's, it's not. I don't believe it's the whole of Scripture, the whole or entirety of Scripture, because as we said, uh, teleo is only used... In three cases, with, with regard to graphe scripture, with the definite article, the scripture, it, only, it always refers to a certain portion of scripture, that is the prophetic portions regarding Christ and his work. So I believe that's what we're looking at here. So, uh, thrown down, right? The, the category, the, the law has been thrown down to be inactive and useless, terminating, destroyed, uh, terminated, destroyed, voided, annulled, and thus we are released from it. All right? There's a lot of verses about this. And there's a lot of the law imprisoned, the, the scripture imprisoned everything under sin. And that was a note from, right, with the definite article without clear citation, but in Jesus is always making clear citation, right, about my, my thirst, they gave me sour drink, so he'd already made a, a clear citation. So it says, but without clear citation, we have references uh, in Galatians 3.22, and there's some other verses that the scripture imprisoned everything under sin. Wow. There's references to the whole or entirety of scripture. 
Some grammarians note that scripture in the singular with the definite article, the scripture, without clear citation, may actually refer to the whole or entirety of scripture. Well, yeah, the scripture, remember, 97.4% of it is the law. And that definitely imprisoned everybody under sin. And I think that's in the context of that Galatians passage is what it's talking about. The law, the old covenant law. As Christian musicians, why are Gentile Christians trying to apply paleos, that's you know paleontology, old, dated, antiquated, antiquated, uh, ancient, worn out, weak, worthless, Old Testament, graphe scriptures that were designed only for the Jewish people, acting for one purpose as household school guardians or household guardians and household managers to teach them the milk of the ABC fundamentals, right? From the Logian oracle utterances of God. These are writings that the oracle utterances of God, and that's the prophets, right? Why, why, why? These are all Jewish terms for Jewish people. Jesus fulfilled to completion and finished, accomplished, completed, and ended not only the prophetic portions of Scripture regarding him and his work, but really the whole purpose of the law. We see that, which is the basis of the other 97.4% of the Old Testament. So unless you are trying to convert Jews using the 2.6%, right? The other 2.6%, there is no purpose for you to be reading the Old Testament. Wow. Especially with the stern warnings about doing so or teaching it. So there's, go look at the Logos Word of God. There's a lot of stern warnings about this. Lord, thank you for delivering us from graphe scripture that imprisons everything under sin and delivering us from a ministry of death and condemnation because of grama writings. That's a quote. And now giving us a ministry of Zoe genuine life that is no longer by grama writings, get it, is no longer by grama writings on stone or with ink, but by the Holy Spirit, grapho written on human hearts. Right? This is the direct writing of God directly on our hearts by the means of the Holy Spirit. This is super powerful. You know the implications. If we just get back to the gospel and the promise of the new covenant, we are going to see radical differences. You know, our faith is what limits us. Absolutely. Our faith is what limits us. What are we depending on? Are we depending on writings? then that's as far as we'll get. So let's go look at the next blog. Why don't you put your ideas down here, what God is showing you, what he has shown you. Uh, pray, pray, pray. Okay, that's the key. Pray, pray, pray. And we'll get more. God bless you. Bye-bye.